Hello, everyone. Hello, all the wanderers, seekers, and healers, and sky watchers out there. I'm Eric Roth, shamanic astrologer, here with another episode of Signs, Planets, and Stellar Rhythms. And uh, this is going to be episode 28. And so we're in the middle of the eclipse season. And so that's obviously going to be the topic of today, the next eclipse that's going to be taking place here in early December. And just kind of an update here, I'm still planning to do some additional videos, uh, one on the Pluto-Venus conjunction series that's coming up in December. And then also uh, as Venus goes retrograde in Capricorn, uh, so there's going to be some very uh, potent activities in that regard. And uh, I'll be doing, of course, at the end of the year, a video about uh, looking ahead, um, the sort of the astrological forecast, if you will, or intent for 2022. And so look for that in about a month. All right, so uh, to get going here, I'm gonna share you share some slides, share some, um, some visuals here so you can understand the process of what we're going to be getting into. All right. So here we are, episode 28, there's a total solar eclipse happening on December 3rd slash 4th, depending on where you are on the planet. And it's happening at the bottom of the world. Well, maybe from the perspective of people that live in the Southern Hemisphere, it could be the top of the world from them. But from here uh, in North America, it's taking place at the uh, bottom of the world. And it's a, it's a powerful event, but not no many people obviously are gonna be down there. Um, but uh, so we'll, we'll talk about what all of that means coming up here. And I'd like to just um, continue with an acknowledgement and invocation and honoring the stars and planets, all our relations, all your relations and all my relations and all of creation, this breath of creation that is existence here on this, in this third dimensional reality that connects us to the other two worlds, the underworld and the celestial realm. And we're part of that cosmic creation. All the planets, the stars, and Gaia and Mother Earth, that's part of all of who we are and our roles in this world. So I'd like to give thanks and gratefulness to all that is. And thank you for tuning in and watching this video here. Episode 28. This is um, uh, what we're gonna talk about here, the vitals of the solar eclipse, how it affects us personally, saving symbol, and the eclipse through the astrological houses. There was a request made to, um, uh, through YouTube uh, to take us through the eclipse through the, the, the 12 houses. So I'm definitely gonna be doing that at the end of this video. So stay tuned for that. And uh, to get also to get updates and announcements, uh, definitely subscribe to this and like it to help me create more videos and that you will get notifications when I do create more videos in the future. Okay, so what is totality? What is a total solar eclipse? Well, that means that the sun is covered or eclipsed by the passing of the moon. This is the, uh, the moon coming between the earth and the sun. So there's a new moon every single month, but it only lines up, roughly lines up about every six months or so, uh, usually a little bit less than six months, but not every year we get it where it's completely covered. Sometimes the eclipse is, is just partial or just, uh, and just kind of just the sliver of the sun that's covered up. Uh, and so this upcoming one, uh, and in part because it's uh, not far from only a few weeks from the December solstice that has happening here at the bottom of the world. Um, and there usually is um, a, either a two to four week period where there can be uh, two to three eclipses in a season. So each season is a little under six months apart. So, um, and when, when, there is, when there is an eclipse, uh, this is something we can see the actual uh, corona, um, sort of this uh, extending atmosphere, if you will, that blows up from the, uh, the center of the sun or the, uh, the uh, sorry, the center and the, uh, of course, the surface of the sun outward into space. And where does this take place? Well, 
There's a, a night sky illustration, a view from Antarctica. And this is right around the midnight hour at that at one of the locations down there during the, and where it's set on the center line. And you can see here that the constellations look like they're upside down, at least from a Northern Hemisphere perspective. You know, if you um, live a lot farther south and uh, closer in the Southern regions in the Southern Hemisphere, this would look uh, fairly normal in that regard. But we can see the eclipse happening. We can see Antares, the star, which is really prominently involved in the solar eclipse. They're only in fact two degrees apart between the eclipse and the star Antares, the heart of the scorpion. We have Mercury and Vesta and Mars not far. And Mars has just recently risen in the early morning sky. So it's, it's not far in a degree wise from this particular eclipse. Okay, so where does this eclipse take place? Well, as I was sharing before, it's in the land of ice, Antarctica. And this is the bottom of the world. And you can see only part of the Antarctic continent is on the center line. And a lot of it is over the Southern Ocean and extending a little bit, almost to the tip of um, the bottom end of South America. And partial, there's a really faint partial eclipse at the tip of South America, uh, Southern tip, uh, Southern area of New Zealand and the very, very southern end of uh, Africa and South Africa in particular. So on those areas, a person may see, may be able to see part of that eclipse uh, taking place. And it, it basically affects all time zones. I mean, since it's at the bottom of the earth, it's all the time zones are, are joined up here on this. And it's listed as December 4th in at timeanddate.com as well as uh, on NASA. And so, um, but in some places, different parts, it's actually December 3rd, because it here on the Pacific coast in the US, it actually takes place just about 20 minutes, 18 minutes before uh, midnight on the 3rd. So this is part of an eclipse family as well. Uh, this is Saros 152. I outlined Saros 126 in the previous eclipse video that was a total lunar or near total lunar eclipse. Um, and so they happen about 18 years and 11 days apart. And uh, the last time this solar eclipse took place in this family of 152 was back in 2003, November 23rd at one, deg one degree Sagittarius. The next one will take place December 15th, 2039, uh, with another total solar eclipse at 2332 Sagittarius. So it, it, it progresses further along the, uh, the side. So the one after that one, uh, we can already kind of tell that it's going to move into the sign of Capricorn when we go beyond uh, uh, 18 years beyond 2039, which would be, or would put us in that um, uh, 20, uh, 57 area and in late December of that year, uh, 11 days. So that would probably be about December uh, 26, uh, 2057. So, so if you, uh, in fact, on NASA, um, you type in NASA solar eclipses or NASA sorrows, and they'll give you all the information about the Saros families for solar and lunar eclipses and give you all the data that you were looking for. So this is the 13th one of a total family of 70 solar eclipses. And these eclipses are going, uh, are getting, to, are getting going fairly strongly originating with the first eclipse, which is a partial one, um, all the way back in 1805. And it will continue for another, uh, looks like here, um, a thousand more years. Uh, all the way until uh, 3049 with a very slight partial solar eclipse. And that will be the last one in that particular family. All right, so the, um, here's what the chart looks like. The astrological chart, um, again, and it's, uh, on, takes place on December 3rd on the Pacific Coast time here in North America. And then everywhere else in the US and most other places in Canada, it's in, and Mexico, it's in, uh, the, the, on this, the early morning of December 4th. So it crosses over mountain central and Eastern time in that regard. As we saw in the night sky map, 
of that eclipse conjuncts Mercury and Vesta, and you can see it all grouped up in here. So this is a really powerful um, grouping here in Sagittarius. In addition, there's a square to Neptune in Pisces. So this eclipse, and we're gonna we'll talk about the entire meaning of all of this, but I wanted to give you a graphic of what this looks like. And uh, if you were to uh, put it up in say at astro.com or other uh, works, again, this is from the perspective of Southern Oregon is where I've got this here, uh, where I live in Medford, Oregon. So you can, um, you can look at it if you have your own um, astrology software or uh, if you go to astro.com, you can, you can pull up a, a chart for this particular time. Again, this is 1142 uh, PM uh, 11, or 1143 PM on the Pacific coast and at 2.42 a.m. Uh, Eastern Standard Time. All right, so here we are, a total solar eclipse in Sagittarius at 12 degrees and 22 minutes. So it is, as we saw before, it happens in the constellation of the Scorpion. So we can see it just above the Scorpion here and considered as part of that constellation and below Ophiuchus, which actually uh, on the other side of the world, it's, it's above Ophiuchus and below the scorpion. So we can see it kind of on the edge of this, um, uh, you know, the Milky Way galaxy and the, the bulge of it and not far from the, the center point of this, which is this darker area here is where that uh, galactic center is, is located here. All right. so. This eclipses are portals, it creates a window into a greater level of awareness and a deeper shadow in our search for meaning and truth. So the dark comes from the dark will come to the star and Terry's in the cave of rebirth knowledge. So we can look at this as a cave of rebirth knowledge. Sagittarius is something that is exploring new, uh, new truths and meanings. And since it's happening near the star and Terry's, the heart of the scorpion, this can help clear out misinformation, half-truths, and falsehood that clutter and stick to our minds like sap. So it could take time to scrub and cleanse our minds, uh, cleanse the mind, search for answers, and in the uncomfortable, uncomfortable unknown. Um, also in that, in this eclipse space, there can be a resistance to what we are holding on to and what we have and think that is our vital, that is vital to our identity and journey. But some of that could be very well completed in our lives and holding on to it only um, stunts our, our soul's growth at best and becomes a way to sabotage ourselves at worst. So there's a, there's a layer to this, you know, this emerging truth that can sometimes be scary. If, if we're learning a certain truth that is uncomfortable to our own, what we might say nested in that, that for whatever reason, we've identified with a, with a particular old story that Perhaps we're no longer that story. Maybe we're emerging into a new story. And this is a, a eclipse that can help reveal that, especially for those that have um, uh, any personal points, meaning uh, uh, moon, the ascendant, uh, sun, Venus, Mars, Mercury, and even Jupiter in that area of Sagittarius or opposite or even square. Um, in that uh, I would say within about a six to 10 degree orb of uh, the, the area where the eclipse takes place. So in the signs of Gemini, Pisces and Virgo and within about six to 10 degrees of uh, 1222 Sagittarius. So we can see that Vesta and Mercury fall into that with, which is a contributing to this as well as Pisces Neptune and Pisces, which can create a more confusing and um, spiritual, uh, you know, I say, environment uh, or a contribution to uh, to the energy that eclipse this eclipse creates in our lives. Well, let's take a look at the Sabian symbol, which, if you followed other videos I've done, the Sabian symbol is kind of marks every degree in the zodiac but it goes to one through 30 instead of zero through 29. So in this case, we add one to, uh, to whatever the degree of the eclipse is. And in this case, it's, it's 12 degrees Sagittarius. So it becomes 13 Sagittarius. And Linda Hill did a lot of amazing research in her work in creating the Sabian Oracle. 
uh, than this book. And this is from the 13th Saj entry. The window's past is brought to light. And her key words are unveiling and exposing or creating a new and vibrant beginning, getting rid of yesterday's darkness, looking back to revision attitudes, being freed for new opportunities, the scales of falling from one's eyes, reasons as to why relationships have failed, remembering past life uh, memories, things being found or discovered, wills, inheritances, death certificates, and burying the past, pensions, and insurance policy. So things to deal with that we've locked into the past may come to light, may is, is brought forth for us to be visible. Um, so there's another energy uh, that the saving symbol connects us to at 13 Sag. So I, I look at this, I describe this as a, a giving us an opportunity to learn from the past while not allowing it to take ownership of our future decisions. It is there as a guide imparting wisdom to create something new and vital in our lives. All right, so let's take a little trip through the houses. So what does this eclipse mean through each of these houses now? Well, I come from the perspective of shamanic astrology. So it's a little bit different take on the houses than say what, what maybe you might be used to, or if you follow, you know, especially if you follow different, um, if you follow the traditional astrology or other kind of astrology, um, you could also uh, tune into it through your own um, uh, perspective and viewpoint about what the houses mean. But this is a, a, a way to look at the houses and they typically are resonant with a, uh, each house is resonant with the, a particular sign. So the first house starting with Aries resonates with Aries, the second with Taurus, the third with Gemini and so forth. So, um, so if you have the eclipse in Sagittarius, and it happens to be in your first house, say your Sagittarius rising, then this is an eclipse that has a lot to do with uh, individual self-awareness and uh, actional energy. So it's going forth and putting, you know, really um, adding to that energy, that life purpose track for yourself. The second house, um, well, uh, this eclipse was connecting to Taurus uh, receiving pleasures of life in traditional astrology. This could mean, you know, material things in, uh, and financial prospects in our life, personal resources, that kind of thing. So this eclipse will, will, will activate that in your life and, and help you see maybe the past and or uh, what once was the shadow of that energy and seeing meaning and truth in there. The third house, networking, communication, house of communication in general, um, you know, this house, uh, you know, is the way can connect us to the way we think, the way we uh, speak and write, and um, also has some association with networking. So, you know, some uh, in some traditions, it's the, you know, um, uh, siblings and family ties a little bit, not to be confused with the fourth house, which is much more rooted in the home. Um, so that will be activated in this eclipse and, and, and bringing out the truth and the shadow um, and meaning about that. And so it could uncover some uncomfortable things about maybe some miscommunications that you've had, maybe some, some greater level truth that is suddenly revealed to that. And, um, but with Neptune squaring all of this, this could create some, uh, some challenges in actually communicating and getting the right information and, and having to sift through all that. The eclipse happening in the fourth house is about family and home. This is about being connected to the cancer archetype. So it has um, uh, dealings with home. If it happens to be that your Sagittarius is in the home life, it could mean to do deal with you know the the traveling home, the the energy of the gypsy, uh, uh, the sort of the caravan uh, through the world of 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 spiritual truths new meanings and um, uh, uncovering uh, new discoveries about oneself and their journey. And the fifth house, this is an interesting house. This one, you know, traditionally has been uh, looked at as, um, you know, considered with youth and, um, uh, you know, the, uh, let's see, in tradition, um, uh, it can it can connect us to the, to the youthful spirit, the, the sort of that energy that can come forth with just, you know, creating 
uh, without any boundaries in that regard. And um, it's a sort of the youthful ego exploring the world for the first time. It's a creative force. So it's not jaded, it's, 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 it's self-love embodiment, embodied out there and materialized. So this eclipse could create a, a dynamic for that uh, energy uh, to be stirred up in a way that uh, you might see like where the past doesn't, like what you've created, it comes to, comes to being here in, at this time. And that um, there could be some, uh, you know, challenges around um, uh, being able to, 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 to manifest something in, right in the middle of that eclipse, but then there's a release of, an, of a new idea or a new creation that can come forth and maybe a new way of connecting with, with self, radical radiant self-love. All right, in the sixth house, this is the sacred patterning of life. This is uh, connected with uh, Virgo. And traditionally, uh, this has been um, a house that's also uh, ruled health and shows you where uh, the strengths and weaknesses are, vulnerabilities are health-wise as well. But it's, it's really connected to the sacred patterning, the sacred work itself, like at its essence. And so, but combined, this could be something where the eclipse reveals that you know, maybe it's a good time to connect with your altar, with your, with your sacred space, with, with whatever uh, sacred um, uh, purpose you have uh, in, in how, you, how you embody your role in life. This could actually help you see the rhythm and the patterning of that role and, and maybe the things that need to be, uh, need to get, have attention. In the seventh house, this is all about relationship, partnership, marriage. Uh, in particular, it's connected to the sign of Libra. And so this is one where I would recommend that, you know, at, at no times would you want to, uh, during this, in the middle of a total solar eclipse, uh, engage or, or form a, a new commitment with another person. Um, it would be more like after the eclipse takes place that that could be a release of that energy for you to forge that kind of energy, to, to forge that kind of commitment in the, in the future. This could be a time of just simply holding space for the partnership and the marriage and or uh, the, um, uh, you know, whatever relationship you might have that you, you're bonding with in that way to, to commit to the future, but just simply holding that space. Uh, but not making, not signing any any major uh, contracts, as they say, during that time with when it regards to relationships. All right, in the eighth house, this is the house of death and rebirth. This is the uh, traditionally it rules uh, sex and death and rebirth and the afterlife um, and legacies, inheritances, other people's resources that are available to you, psychic abilities and the occult. These are all parts of the traditional language. But in at its essence, again, it's, it kind of goes into the to the to the primal uh, energy of the earth, that 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 core where all the organic matter breaks down and and then is is repurposed for new life. And so, for the the eclipse to take place next to the star Antares in Sagittarius, wow, this could be a a, a wellspring of new knowledge coming forth. But at the same time. A detoxification, a cleansing of, of what once was out. So that could be pretty powerful if, if you've got Sagittarius there in the eighth house, and the, especially if you've got, say, the moon there, or the sun, or the ascendant. This could be a really powerful, not the ascendant, but the sun and moon, or the, um, uh, the uh, Venus or Mars or Mercury, for example. All of those would be uh, really powerfully uh, brought forth um, in your. Uh, uh, in your energy with the uh, eighth house uh, version. And then the ninth house, this is uh, the house of travel and adventures traditionally, um, but in Tremonic astrology, this is about vision quests, the hero's journey, and our, you know, our search and seeking of meaning and truth. And so this is uh, definitely a resonant house for this eclipse to be in because it's in the sign of Sagittarius. So this could be just simply amplifying the Sagittarius energy, but in a way that 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 gives it a, 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 a much deep, excuse me, a deeper and richer um, value coming forth into the world. So it could help you uh, connect into uh, your next quest, or maybe elevate you into the next phase of the quest that you're on, especially spiritually speaking. 
And the 10th house, the circle of elders, structure and building. Um, this is uh, traditionally has been, um, you know, the house of ambition, aspiration, attainment, um, and uh, profession and public standing. Uh, it is also how you intend to take responsibility outward to express yourself in the world. So uh, this is, so the house, the cliffs taking place in that energy there, this would be something where it would show up in a way where it, it, it embodies, um, you know, the, uh, you know, maybe a new phase, a new dynamic, uh, uh, a repurposing of, of what you want to, what your calling is in life, what your, you know, uh, what you want to create as far as real world goals, and practicality and structure. Um, yeah, and so that eclipse could have some meaning in that regards for, for a person who's got some, um, you know, that personal points there, or if it's just happening in your 10th house, there may be some energy that is stirred up in that, you know, either square or, or even trying for that matter. So something to, something to connect with. And then the 11th house, this is a, a, a cosmic perspective, community, uh, sort of a larger window, larger perspective and envisioning as the eagle would see definitely connected with the resonant with the sign of Aquarius. Uh, and so this has a, uh, this eclipse could give you sort of a broader level picture, uh, a greater picture, a cosmic picture than a, a more revolutionary picture, meaning more, possibly more ideas and uh, expansion of consciousness during this time where the eclipse is, is, is taking place if it's in your 11th house there. And the last house, the 12th house, emerging with the divine selfless service is resonant with the sign of Pisces. There is this um, energy that traditionally has been looked at as uh, secrets and sorrows, and even uh, sometimes described as a jail, um, accidents and trouble and unseen forces, uh, hospitals, and of course, prisons. I'm just looking at the different uh, different uh, bullet points for for what traditionally has been was stood for i typically look at these houses again from a shamanic astrology perspective so this is yeah it's certainly hidden mysteries here the eighth house is also has some hidden mysteries as well but the twelfth house is, is is more i would say celestially oriented so when we you know i think that the shadow of that would be like a kind of a jail like image but more of the elevated um expanded part of that the light polar or the light side of that with a dynamic or healthy side would be more about the new visions and new dreams um, there's actually a connection into the ninth house a little bit there but it's in this 12th house it's much more mystically uh, uh, captured so this this Sagittarius eclipse taking place in the 12th house could connect you into the new visions and new dreams. Now, if someone is is having a lot of like, you know, with any of these um, points, if you've got some hard aspects in there with say Saturn or Pluto or Chiron, for example, then this could bring in that particular planetary complex and, and colorize it in a different way than what I'm describing. So that's just something to bear in mind as, as I'm going through this. And the same could be said with the 12th house. So it could bring out especially if Pluto's there, could bring up the shadow end of that, of that 12th house where it could feel, uh, you know, uh, challenging or difficult. But Pluto's there to help empower you ultimately and, 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 and embrace a, a rebirthing of your, of, your, uh, of your life, you know, and, and helping you cleanse out and, and, and begin a whole new story. So that's the solar eclipse through the 12 houses. And I want to thank everyone for, for watching this. Uh, you can find more information about me on unspiralnexus.com, as well as the star series I'm doing with Kaylin Castell at mystaralchemy.com. And at shamanicastrology.com is where the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School originated uh, from Daniel Gio Mario. So you can, you can tune in there. I do personal readings, classes, events, of course, videos and webinars and uh, upcoming podcast, uh, Rhythm of the Stars, will be coming soon, uh, uh, later next month. So stay tuned for that. And thank you all for being a part of this. I wish you well out there and happy holidays to those here in the, um, in the U.S. with the Thanksgiving weekend and um, blessings to everyone out there. Thank you.